Okay. So first of all, thank you for your invitation. Um, the, 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 the topic of my talk was the genomic and epigenomic of metabolic associated fatty liver disease, because this is the most uh, prevalent uh, liver disease right now worldwide. And uh, uh, this condition has a strong uh, heritable component, meaning that uh, a large fraction of uh, the risk of developing uh, uh, fatty liver disease uh, is explained by inherited uh, uh, factors. And uh, th this means that is due to genetic uh, factors or epigenetic factors that uh, um, are mediated through the, 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 the sequence or, um, uh, of the DNA or the modifications of the sequence of the DNA. And uh, um, I, during the presentation, I review uh, the uh, major findings, uh, especially related to the uh, genetic factors leading to the predisposition of fatty liver disease, which uh, uh, started about 15 years ago with the identification of the first uh, major genetic factor for this condition in uh, um, the PMPA3 gene, um, which led to uh, all the discoveries, uh, uh, the subsequent discoveries are related to the uh, genetic predisposition to this condition. So what, what aspects will you uh, be uh, most interested uh, in uh, um, the presentation? Well, clinical, but well, the clinical factors, uh, uh, which are uh, uh, most strongly associated with the uh, the risk of uh, uh, um, liver-rated outcomes, meaning the development of cirrhosis and its complication, and of uh, in particular uh, also hepatocellular carcinoma, are uh, of course besides the age of the patients, because uh, the risk complication increase with uh, aging uh, the um, Male sex or uh, in women uh, being uh, in a postmenopausal uh, status. And uh, uh, the, the major one is the severity of the uh, metabolic alterations uh, underlying the disease, meaning the, um, the severity of the insulin resistance and, in particular, the development of uh, diabetes, which is the major risk factor for this condition. Other uh, risk factors are represented by the um, uh, the excess uh, alcohol intake, but the risk of complication uh, is uh, strongly dependent uh, on the stage of liver disease, meaning the severity of liver fibrosis, which can be uh, diagnosed histologically or by non-invasive biomarkers uh, such as the uh, FIV4, the fibrosis for uh, index uh, or uh, the, the use of uh, physical uh, methodologies, such as, for example, the measurement of uh, liver stiffness by uh, transient elastography. So what uh, we, we have found uh, in, the, in the last years is that uh, about uh, half of the risk of developing uh, a severe liver disease uh, uh, in individuals with metabolic risk factor for, with obesity and diabetes is explained by uh, genetics, meaning the, the genetic predisposition to develop uh, liver disease, mainly in genes regulating the, the lipid handling by the liver, so the, the compartmentalization of fat into the liver. So uh, we, and these factors are inherited at conception, so they are already present uh, at the birth and can be determined. So uh, they, 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 this can be typed even in very young uh, individuals, uh, for example, in obese children or adolescents uh, um, to predict, uh, uh, for example, the risk of uh, uh, developing during their life uh, severe complication due to uh, liver disease. So, uh, well, one possibility is to concentrate our efforts, uh, for example, for uh, changing the lifestyle, uh, increasing uh, physical activity, sport, uh, healthier diet uh, uh, in these young individuals to prevent the complication of liver disease or in uh, those uh, older adults with already some uh, degree of uh, liver disease uh, predict uh, even uh, before cirrhosis, those are that higher risk of liver cancer uh, to, uh, to guide uh, uh, more strict surveillance of the complications of the disease. 
In the future, uh, what I shown during the presentation is that uh, we have uh, identified uh, through these genetic variants also some new therapeutic targets so that uh, we can, uh, in some way, uh, um, th there are studies showing that we can cure uh, more or less uh, uh, the, uh, the mut mutation predisposing to liver diseases. So we can use the, uh, we can type the presence of this mutation and in patients uh, carrying uh, this mutation, we can use uh, some drugs that uh, go to the liver and uh, uh, for example, turn off the, the bad gene basically. So uh, there are already clinical studies with this approach, for example, targeting the PMPLA3 main mutation uh, predisposing to fatty liver disease, and we will see in the next year uh, whether or not they will be effective. Yes, I mean, uh, that's exactly what uh, um, I was uh, uh, referring to uh, uh, right now. So we, we can use this genetic factor on one end to predict uh, the risk of a, a progressive liver disease. And on the other end, we can uh, use uh, this, uh, the presence of this genetic factor to identify targets for therapy. One possibility uh, I was referring before is to silence, to turn off uh, the bad genes that predispose to the disease. Another possibility is uh, 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 even to uh, to mimic the effect of a protective mutation uh, that uh, uh, we have discovered protects against fatty liver disease. For example, there is uh, this gene that uh, metabolizes steroids in the liver, and uh, some people have uh, a variant that uh, does not work uh, uh, very well, but protects against fatty liver disease. So we are trying to uh, I mean, uh, some researchers are trying to mimic the effect of this uh, mutation by using drugs that uh, turn off this gene. And uh, the, there are promising studies that uh, show that this may be effective to decrease inflammation in methyl D. So again, we'll see, but I think the results are very promising and, and it may open up a new, a new uh, completely new approach for a treatment of the disease. <laughs>